Have you ever wondered why despite all of your efforts, you still feel distant from God? What if the answer lies in not doing more, but in letting it go? Today, I'm sharing three things I quit to grow closer to God. Stay with me because you might find these are the three things that are holding you back too. Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Thought Ball. I'm Emily, I'm a certified Christian life and business coach. I'm so excited that you're here to listen today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss another episode. We talk all things relatable Christian life, entrepreneurship, and anything that comes in between. So I am so happy that you're here. Let's get into today's topic. I have been where many of you are and feeling like I'm doing everything I can do to connect with God, but still feeling super distant from him. Like, I'm not sure if I'm on the right path. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I don't even know if he's listening to me. I felt like in that season, I just couldn't break through. No matter how much I prayed, read scripture, or tried to fit what others expected of me or had said about me, something was totally missing. And it wasn't until I started to let go of these certain things that I thought I needed that I began to experience a different relationship with God and a different type of peace that only could come from him. In today's episode, I'm going to share three things I decided to quit that transformed my walk with God. And these weren't easy changes, but the freedom and closeness that it has brought in my life has been worth every struggle and uh, coming to Jesus, coming to terms with the things that I needed to change. I hope that as you li listen, you'll see reflections in your own journey and can find encouragement to take that next step. One of the biggest barriers between me and God was my obsession with timelines and specifically the timeline that I created for myself. Inter interestingly enough, this culmination of change happened a few years ago in my Jesus year, so the year that I turned 33. Leading up to this birthday, I had set all these rigid expectations of goals that were supposed to have happened, you know, business that I was wanting to have obtained by then a certain lifestyle. Uh, and when things didn't happen on that timeline, I just, I questioned God. I questioned if I had been listening to him clearly, if truly what I felt like he was calling me to do was even the thing that I should be doing and investing time and money and energy into. What I realized is that my own timeline was my own and it was getting in the way of trusting God's plan for my life and instead of strong arming what I wanted into existence by claiming I prayed about it and God said yes. That is very easy to do as Christians because we live in a world that's fast paced and that pretty much anything you want, you can get. And that can apply to things in your life that truly you do not have control over. And the weight of that was pressing on my heart. It was pressing on me. Like I felt like I was wasting time that I didn't have and I was losing out on something that I should have had already received. And when you live in that state, you build up so much resentment because that is not matching your reality and it makes you truly feel like God is turning his back on you or he's deciding to withhold something from you and that is not at all true. Living in that state really challenges you, your relationship with God because then you begin to feel like you can't trust him even though in hindsight you realize you were merely trusting in yourself and not truly in God. That is hard to manage and that is hard to deal with. I was in constant prayer about the trajectory of what I was doing and what I, what was going on in my life and God pressed on my heart that year when I was 33, things are going to change this year. And naturally I was thinking, oh, my business is gonna take off. This is gonna happen for Adam and I. This is gonna be whatever. All these things that I had hoped we would have, I felt like now this might be the year that comes to happen. But I was reminded in the Bible of the story of Abraham and Sarah. I was reminded that God promised promised Abraham he would be a father of many nations, but the years rolled by and Sarah remained child, childless. They were approaching a hundred. Instead of waiting on God's timing, they decided to take matters into their own hands. And many of you know the story. They enlisted Hagar to be a surrogate for them and it led to a lot of pain and conflict and strife. This is all recorded in Genesis chapter 16. But when God fulfilled his promise through Isaac, it was a reminder that his timing is always perfect. You can read about that in Genesis 21. It was an aha moment for me thinking back to that because how often do we try to push our own timeframes on God when, and when God is simply just asking us to trust him? 
all through Abraham's life, God told him, this is going to be the reality of your lineage. This will be your legacy. But he's still, even hearing God's voice and having that very intimate relationship with God, he did not have faith in that. And he felt like he had to take matters into his own hands. I know a lot of you feel that pressure. Maybe you think you should be further along in your business or that you should have figured out how to balance your motherhood. I remember feeling like I should have arrived at certain milestones by these specific ages, especially being someone who has a social media presence with the podcast and other things that I've done in the past. So I recognized that when I needed to let go of that, I needed to let go of this ideal that I had for me and instead embrace what God had. When I quit chasing my own timing and surrendered to God's plan, I found peace because I realized like God knows the desires of my heart. He knows what's best for me. And even still, when I feel anxious and I feel frustrated and I feel aggravated, you know, I can convey those to those closest to me, like my husband and my mom and my best friend. And they're always a listening ear, but they always gently remind me like, you are doing exactly what you need to be doing right now. You just need to trust in his plan. He knows what he created you to do. He knows the desires of your heart and he knows what is good for you right now. And that's so hard being a type of person who likes to micromanage and have everything planned out and want to see goals met that you set. And that's why I became a coach because I love that and I thrive on that. And I love seeing people experience those goals and those accomplishments because I know how it creates a momentum in your life. But all things aren't going to be perfect and all things aren't exactly the way we think they should be that are definitely best for us because God knows what's best for us instead of ourselves. And so when you finally decide to let go of the ideal bedtime routine or perfect balance day or you know, revenue goals for your business, you embrace this beauty of connection with your child instead or you relish in the fact that your business is growing, maybe not at the pace that you want, but God's provision in every milestone and everything that you're learning in that journey in the interim of where you hope to be one day. If it means some things aren't done on time, it's okay. Hey, because letting go gave me room to see God's hand guiding me every step of the way and really seeing his presence in my life. That's what made the difference. And that's what changed my ability to rest in his perfect timing. It played out perfectly in a personal note of having our third child, our two older oldest were involved in praying for another child and to see the miracle of new life coming into our family that was all divinely timed by God even though it was hard for my husband and I to wait and to wonder if we would be able to have another child that was part of our journey and it's a testament to who we are now as a family seeing the miracle that God gave us in a third child and seeing the miracle of who our third child is and knowing that he is the perfect fit for our family um, and that has played out in so many other ways too financially and business wise um, and launching, trying to be entrepreneurial and launching different businesses, just seeing exactly God's hand in it and where it has led me to today, which is totally different than where I had anticipated being. That, the second thing that I did and I quit was doing things on the assumption that I had the best interest in mind. So I started just simply asking, how does this glorify God? And this question harkens back to an old acronym from my childhood, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I've talked about this in previous episodes because it still hangs with me. How does the decisions I make glorify God? And this one mindset shift helped me to have a realistic expectation of what I can commit to and what I choose to do and choose not to do. It was such a simple question to ask myself, but it changed a lot. Even the big, from the big choices to the really small, simple choices. It wasn't just about making decisions based on right or wrong, but about considering wh whether my actions were pointing back to God. One story that inspired this shift was the story of Martha and Mary and Luke chapter 10 verses 38 through 42 when Jesus visited their home Martha was busy preparing and serving which in itself wasn't a bad thing it was a sign of hospitality and I'm sure she took great pride in being able to serve her guests I know when I have people over at my house it's like clean up clean up you do the month-long clean in like a four-hour period because you want your you want your best foot forward you want to present the best that you can to those who come over to your house and that's what Martha was doing but Mary chose to sit at Jesus's feet and listen to him, valuing his presence above the task that needed to be done and that were calling to our attention. Jesus told Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. This showed me and I think it showed all of us who have read this story that our activities and decisions should always flow from a desire to glorify and prioritize God, even over seemingly urgent tasks. 
How does this glorify God? This is a question that can help you discern what truly is important. It simplifies the noise and the countless decisions that fill our day. I read somewhere that we make over five figures of choices every single day. It's insane. Before I was so constantly over committed to things because I felt like they were expected of me and I would always put way more on my plate than I can manage to try to launch things for my business, to try to work at my part-time job, to handle the kids, to do house things, to have people over. There was just always something to do. And so I really had to make sure that saying yes to things was a choice that actually benefited God's plan for my life because you can sign up for all the things you can choose to launch all the things you can choose to try to be involved in all the things but ultimately what that will lead to is a lot of burnout and resentment and bitterness and going back to those feelings really drives a wedge in your relationship with God because you feel like you are longing for more but never fulfilled you're pouring out but never filled up and we can't live spiritually poor that will not ever give good fruit from the actions that we take and the choices that we make and so martha was doing good things being hospitable and, and all that is very honorable but she was missing the best thing which was to sit at the feet of jesus and really hear what he had to say and what wisdom and discernment he could give for them to live out fully and that's just very convicting i think when any of us hear that story we identify a lot with martha i realized that there was a lot of things i was doing that were good but weren't actually like helpful or fulfilling so when you ask yourself that question it really gives you a perspective to think to think does this really matter is this important right now? It helps you prioritize a lot of choice making too, because it might not be for this season. It doesn't mean you won't ever do that, but right now you probably maybe shouldn't volunteer for that, or you shouldn't take on that new client. You need to just be super aware of God's positioning for you in the season that you're in, because everyone's going to be in a different timeline of their life and have the different margin in their day of the demands. If your kids are smaller versus older, if you're launching a business or you're in a you know, flat pace of growth, uh, all those bring different positives. If we can look at our circumstance with that in mind, where's the margin and what should I be doing with that margin? That's where this question really comes into play and can help you make so many decisions that in the past I would have languished over. But now having that question in mind, I can say, okay, right now that can't be the answer and I can't make that choice. So imagine a scenario where you're struggling and you're juggling a million different responsibilities, running your business, trying to be present with your kids, managing your house, and then this op opportunity comes up that sounds super exciting but will stretch you even thinner. That's a moment where you can say, okay, I don't know, would that glorify God if I did that too, if I added to? And there will be some seasons he will, and you'll be like, I have no idea how I'm going to make this work, but I know God needs me to do this. And then you will see how God works in that circumstance as well. So this is just a very heavy handed question that's short and simple. How does this glorify God, but can help you really remediate any type of languish that you would have after the fact. So it's a good preemptive question to ask yourself in any circumstance that you might be dealing with. So the third thing that I quit was I quit being someone I was never meant to be. This one I'm heavily working on because comparison is so challenging in this world of social media and online presence. There are so many people to compare to that are doing similar things that I am, that have podcasts that are way larger than me, that started way after me, that have incredible social media presence when I've been on there for over a decade. And it's just very easy. And I'm sure in your life, maybe at work, maybe through like your friends, there's always this tug and pull of comparison and it's not even until really recently that I just had to come to terms with this is me this is who God created me to be it doesn't mean I sit in who I am and don't ever try to change I think that's one thing that self-care and secular coaches get wrong it's like you are enough we're not enough God is enough and we're going to fall short all the time. So our pursuit shouldn't be about uh, how I can be more me. It should be how can I be more like God and in doing that, letting go of the comparison of others because God is going to use each of us so uniquely and in so many different areas. Some people are going to be planted in corporate life because God needs them there. There's a huge ripple effect from your life and corporate life. Some people are going to be at home with their children because their children are going to go on to have these in full insane experiences that were nurtured from you. A million different examples I could give. And for so long, having the timeline issue with myself and being pressured by what I feel should be happening and then having this, this external 
feeling like I have to measure up to what other people are accomplishing in the same amount of time is just a recipe for burnout and for overwhelm. And you're not going to make any progress or have any momentum toward where God is calling you if you are only focused on the immediate need to have this certain image of yourself. And that's something that is very freeing because I know that God created me to be unique from everybody else in the same for you. And in, in that acknowledgement, you understand like this is journey isn't about how I'm measuring up to somebody else. It's just how am I becoming more like God and closer to him? That's ultimately the race that we are running. We're not running the race to hit the first million dollars. We're not running the race to have the most children. We're not running the race to have the biggest house or the best accolade after your name. We're running the race toward Jesus. And if we focus on that, we know that we have our own sanctification process to go through. I don't want to be sanctified the same way someone else does. I don't want what someone else has because that's not going to get me closer to God. That's getting that person closer to God. We always ask these questions like, why does that happen for that person? Why not me? But really, you just need to consider where is God? Where is God in my heart? Where is God in my priorities? That is our main focus. When we have that in alignment, we are able to run the race fully with intention and have little regret because God only wants what's best for us not what is the most fun and the most awesome and the most exhilarating for us. He wants what is best. And what's best for us is to draw close to him. And he knows this. And just as a parent loves a child and disciplines them and gives them what they need when they need it, teaches them at the level and the age that they are, we're in that same, we're in that same type of relationship with God. And I love to think about it that way because I only want what's best for my children. I only want them to accomplish more than they ever dreamed of. And I also am aware of my presence in their life to nurture certain things at certain times and to teach them, even if it's a hard lesson. So when we embrace what God has for us, it it becomes exciting because we know that he only wants to draw closer to us and he only does want what is good for us. And your experience here on earth is going to be your your unique experience. And that's just a testimony to him. So when I rest in that and rest in that truth that I found now in my mid thirties, it's exhilarating because I know that there's so much life to be lived in this moment. He's given me so much right now. I am looking forward to the future and I set goals, but I'm also open-handed in that God may have that change. He may have that goal not come to fruition. And there may be obstacles and things that happen and opportunities I never imagined, but that is part of our journey here on earth. And so when we think about like the story of David and Goliath, they wanted him to wear this armor and they were, everyone around him thought that there's no way this is going to happen, but David knew what he could do. And he just trusted and had faith that God was going to let him win a fight against a literal giant. And he did because of his faith. So there's nothing too big or too small that God is doing in your life that matters. And when we live in that moment, it helps us to be present and enjoy where we're at, knowing that there's more to come, good and bad, but ultimately it will be for for our good. So I don't know if you've ever looked at another moms or dads or Instagram profile that you've always held at some pinnacle and thought, if only I could be that organized or that cool or if my house looked like that. I've spent years in that frame of mind, in that world, looking on social media. It's very exhausting. One of the best things you can do is take social media out of the picture, take breaks and do things to set healthy boundaries with that. And, you know, when you finally recognize this is my own life and I need to either live it and stop wishing to be somewhere else, that is a gift that you give yourself that God can give you in that peace in that present moment. The turning point for me was when I realized like God doesn't need me to be anyone other than who I am and who he made me to be. And I remember reading in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, where God says, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. I wasn't made to be perfect. You weren't made to be perfect or to fit someone else's ideal. I just need to surrender what I'm doing and being focused on bringing glory to God. So by quitting my timeline, by seeking God's glory above my own comfort and choosing to be the person he created me to be, I began to experience this closeness with God. And I hadn't felt that intensely in a long time. And it wasn't about achieving more, but releasing control, which is hard for people who are like me in type A. Letting go hasn't been easy and it's an ongoing process that I haven't mastered, but I'm trying and I'm trying to be intentional about where God has me now and work diligently in that. To whom much is given, much is expected. And we always hold up the Proverbs 31 to some ideal. But really, all she did was 
not teach us that women should have everything or you can do everything all at one time. No, everything she was given, she stewarded well at the time she was given it. She did not have all these things at one time, but every opportunity God brought to her, she sought God and stewarded well what he had given her in that season. We can do that too. We should do that. That should be the living example that we choose to do day in and day out. It's hard to surrender things and to let go of the control. I will say that in that, in doing that, you are seeking him first and foremost, and that will reap you so much more harvest and fruit from your daily life. And um, if you take anything from this episode right now, just let it be this. Drawing closer to God isn't about adding more, but it's about releasing what is holding you back from him. I stopped living by my own timeline, trying to. I'm still working on that. I started asking how I could glorify God in things that I'm doing every single day. And I quit trying to be someone that I was not made to be. And through it all, I found that God is right there with me, ready to meet meet me where I am. And it's not always easy to let go, but it's in letting go that you find that closeness with the Lord. So I encourage you today, maybe it's time to ask yourself, what do you need to quit to create more space for God in your life? I want to hear from you. What's one thing that you need to let go of to draw closer to God? Drop your thoughts in the comments and let's encourage each other. And if you're ready to take a deeper dive and truly understanding your God-given identity and purpose, check out my Calibrate Your Compass book. You will love it. It's designed to help you find clarity and direction in your walk with the Lord. And don't forget to share this with someone who might need this encouragement today. Thanks for being here and I can't wait to talk soon. Bye for now.